season, and then we get into the postseason. Yes, Mike, sir. what's going on, man? How you doing? Not much. Thanks for having me on, guys. Good to be here. Absolutely. Good to have you. Um, let, let, me, let me start here. Uh, you're 42. You're in the front office of, a, of an NBA team. I mean, is your goal to be a GM someday? Thanks for sharing my age, first of all. <laughs> you look good. I'm looking right at Wikipedia, yeah, I, I, Wikipedia I just man. You don't know. know why that matters, but um, just because you're young, just a number. Because you're young, that's why. Yeah, no, no, that's. I, I look young, but I, I don't feel it. Um, so no, I mean, yeah, sure, we're all in this business. Um, I, I really enjoy it. Uh, that's my main thing. I love basketball. Um, when you get done playing, there's nothing like playing, so you got to figure out something else to do. And uh, for me. You know, there's avenues, there's media like you guys do, which doesn't look like a lot of fun. Uh, you know, there's coaching, there's this, this front office thing that I found that I really enjoy. I, I like it day in and day out, the collaboration, the, the team building, the working with players and coaches and medical staff and all that. It's, it's, it's a fun position. So I, I enjoy it as far as, like, what's next and where do you go from here. I, I don't know. Like, I just know I'm really happy. I like being with the Warriors. Uh, we got a good group, and, um, you know, it's kind of where, where I'm at today at 42. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me about when you played because you grew up in the game, and we were having some fun on yesterday's show because he was like, Guru, the players don't know where they're at in the standings or who they would play if the season ended tonight. When you played, did you keep a track? Did you know where you were at? He's or is that different. fans do that? A little, He's different. a little different. Yeah, I mean, well, first of all, we had like a board up outside the locker room, right, with all the standings. See, and, oh, my uh, goodness. Unfortunately, when I played for the Warriors, we were always at the bottom. <laughs> so <laughs> looking at where, where we could get to. Um, but, no, I mean, you, you, you do, especially as you got older, you have an awareness of the league, what's going on uh, with teams, with players, all sorts of stuff. And that's kind of actually, as I got older, what I realized is like, hey, this is maybe what I want to do when I'm done because every day I'm getting up in the morning looking to see what's going on right. with the league and reading articles and you know, looking at statistics and things. And so that kind of led me to, to do this. It's like, I'm, I'm doing that every day. Let's just, let's just keep doing that minus the plan. Love it. <laughs> Let me ask you this. We're joined by Mike Dunleavy, Jr., Vice President of Basketball Operations. Is it, would it be too much of an overstatement to say that what happens from this point uh, until your season ends will dictate what happens during the off season, Or is that, is that too much of a stretch? Yeah, I mean, we'll see. I mean, I think we'll certainly have some stuff that'll be revealing, but we've already played 77 games right, or so. So I think we've learned a lot. Um, you know, I think we, we kind of have a feel for, for what our team is and what our team is moving forward. But yeah, I mean, the playoffs reveal a lot. So if we're being honest, um, you know, we're looking for more evaluation and see, see what happens. And, um, honestly, the next five games are going to determine who we play in the playoffs and where we're seated. And that's going to determine a lot. So, uh, a lot going on here in the next few weeks. So I was at the game the other night, and I, I saw you next to Bob watching the game, and I'm thinking to myself, does he, and I know you're working, I'm like, does he veer off any time and say, man, I'd love to play the way that the game is being played today? Y yeah, I mean, I, I do. Um, you can't help but, but think that, and when you're viewing the games and watching the games, um, think back to when you <laughs> played, but then also like, okay, if I was playing now, like, it's it the game as it is right now is great, um, especially for a player like me. Um, you know, with the size and the shooting and, and being more open uh -oh. and less fit. Like honestly, now I mean, when I started, Matt can remember like my rookie year. I check in the game. The first thing they're doing is take me down the low post, right. trying to post me up. Like you know, I I got posted up more my rookie year than I did my whole career. You know, it's just it's crazy the way the game has changed. But I think it's in a great spot. I think it's incredibly fun to mm. watch. It's offensive oriented. And, um, you know, we've got, we've got great players. The players, the skill, the talent is as good as it's ever been. So in some ways, I wish I played now, but also, like, man, the league's great. It's tough. Right, right. Mike Dunleavy joining us, Vice President of Basketball Operations. All right, I said something on the air the other day. I'm, uh, now I'm going to run it by you. Uh, I see a couple similarities between Patrick Baldwin Jr. and your game. Fair? It comes in the league a little, you know, PBJ. on the thin side, can shoot yeah. it smart. Uh, is anything there? Yeah, I think that's fair um, with the size and the shooting. And, you know, grew, grew up as a his dad was a coach. Mm -hmm. um, so he, you can tell with Patrick the way he plays and the, the way he has at practice and around the game. Um, he's, he's a student of the game in many ways. Um, he's been coached. He grew up around like the Northwestern basketball program with Chris Collins and, and his dad was a coach. So, um, yeah, I think I, I hadn't really thought about that, but I think with the shooting, the passing, 
Um, you know, that's something that's and, and he just got so many transferable skills and a guy that it's hard for us to find guys that young players that fit for us and the way we play. Right. And what that's what we saw, you know, in the draft with him at like twenty eight at the end of the first round. It's it's tough to find guys and he was a guy we saw that like, hey, He's got a he's got a talent level um, that, that's high, but also like his his feel for the game and his skill could be good. So let let's go with this guy. See, so you know what it's like to be a savior. You know, a high draft pick coming to a new city. Uh, you, you had a jumper. Now you watch Stephen Curry. I'm a fan, and I'm watching Clay Thompson, two of the best to ever do it. Now, and we always talk. About, I'm a spectator. I'm like it's incredible. But as a former NBA player, can you speak to? the adjectives or do you look back and watch Steph play like damn this is incredible yeah I mean I catch myself watching those guys as fans too um the thing that I think probably amazes me the most beyond just their incredible skill level and their shooting ability is the the mental part of it for them is like they just move on to the next shot make or miss you know and it's like incredible these guys will miss six seven in a <laughs> row and they they're taking the next one with the the ultimate confidence and they, they've earned that over their, their careers, but that's the one thing to have, like, the elite skill and the mental part of just next one's going in. And that's what always impressed me watching those guys. You know, that's a good point because if you close your eyes and imagine them missing, they never are like, God, you know, you know like, a, oh, I, I got to make that one. They're just up at the other, other, other end of the floor. Um, did you ever think that two, uh, two guys could shoot it that well from that far, guarded like that? Uh, and on the same team. Well, you know? I mean, I mean just... even if, like I never when the when the three point and you're 42. <laughs> uh, I'm a little older than you, but I I never thought up until I saw Steph Curry halfway through his career. I was like, I I can't believe anybody can shoot the ball like him. It's it's incredible. Um, it's funny the the things we've been saying though the, the last few years is like as good as these guys are, we got to get them more 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 threes. And I think I think Clay's up to like 12. 12 per, per 36 steps like that. The, the, the amount of threes they get up is just as impressive as how well they make them. Yeah. Now, I love an underdog story as much as the next person, but you won a national championship at Duke. We got the Final Four. We don't have the Dukes, the North Carolinas. Is that good for the game? Wait, who, who's in it again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. No Duke, though. You yeah. know, parody, I think parody is always good. Um, I think people are attracted to the, just the tournament in general because it's single elimination. It's so many, so much stakes on the line. But, uh, yeah, I mean, when the Blue Bloods are in it like they were last yeah. year, you know, the Dukes, the Villanovas, the Carolinas, the Kansases, yeah, I mean, there's going to get more, there's going to be more eyeballs. It is what it is. But I think still it'll be an entertaining Final Four. UConn, UConn's really good. Yeah. Uh, but those other teams have, have played well. They deserve to be there. And, um, you know, they've got a shot too. I'm, I'm actually looking at your numbers right now. And you, you came off the bench a little bit, a little bit earlier in your career. And I just want to ask you, uh, uh, about, about Jordan and the fact that uh, how difficult is it for him to start half the time, come off the bench half the time, play without Steph Curry sometimes, play with Steph Curry sometimes. I mean, how tough is that? Yeah, I think it is tough. You know, actually, Jordan and I were talking about it the other day uh, when we were in Dallas, and you know, I, I was in a similar boat with him with the Warriors, signed a contract extension. You know, I wasn't as good of a player as, as he is or will be, but. Um, the expectations um, on your from yourself, first of all, and then also, you know, fans, media, all that. And then most guys in his situation coming from where what he has done the last few years, most guys are t looking to take the next step to be an all-star, to, to have the ball in their hands every night, right. unquestionable role. And, and he's a guy who 190's starting, 190's coming off the bench, 190's playing 40 minutes, 190's playing 17. It's tough. It's really tough. And... You know, there's been nights where I'm sure Jordan, I, I can be better. I, I can, I can certainly play better. But there's nights where it's just he, he's in a tough bind, and um, I think he's navigated it well. I think he's playing his best basketball the season right now, and I think the future is incredibly bright. But don't underestimate how it, it's a tough situation. Like the the, the winning a championship, right. contract extension, his age, playing behind one of the greatest guys, you know, backcourts in the, in, in the league um, ever. So a lot going on there. But I think he's navigated it well and. Uh, is in good position now and moving forward. Let me ask you this, Mike. When did the basketball operations side uh, of the game become attractive to you? And did you even think once or twice about coaching? 
Yeah, so my dad coached in the pros and was on the front office side. So he was like GM for two teams and coached multiple. So I saw both sides of it. I think the thing, as I mentioned before, like as my career was winding down, I found myself looking at stuff and reading articles and looking at players and stat- statistics and evaluating players. I'm like, I think this is what I want to mm. do. Um, the coaching thing, I saw the lifestyle. Um, I saw just a lot of the stuff and the, the way the, the game is going. It, it's it's tough. I'm not saying that I would never do it or, you know, it's not appealing to me, but it just the front office was more appealing for kind of what I was looking to do. And I thought it was more family friendly. I've got four children, awesome. young ages. Um, so I just it was no doubt for me the thing I wanted to do. But, you know, things change. Um, who, who knows what Did happens. Did you see him coaching, Stanley? <laughs> no. Did you, did you see him on the No, why I actually can't. Can. Can. Yeah. He played. No. Well, why, why, just out of curiosity. <laughs> Why is that? I see more front office. Okay. I just, uh, <laughs> it's because. I love this guy. <laughs> like, just, you're just not, you've, you've done all that traveling. You've, you're just, I can tell you're just not, you're not a coach. Yeah. I mean, I would, you're I more agree. of a front office guy. I would, I would agree right now, but. That's things, true. You know, things over time, I, I'm just not ruling out. Like, well, I love my, it. My feelings change. Like, I'm never going to say never, but I don't, I don't have aspirations for that right now. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think of why not. I you got a good, you got a good di- a good disposition for it. I could see you're you're pretty you'd be pretty even keeled. I just don't think you want to. I mean, it's like I I watch Steve and I'm like, <laughs> when does he ever stop? It like never stops. He's got to talk. He's got so much to do. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, but you don't really have it's any got- re- other than. Just it's just life. it's just from knowing you for so yeah. long. Hey, what do you think, Mike Dunleavy, coach or front office? I'd be like, eh, front office, probably. That's all. All right, you all know. Right, we'll see. Um, the one thing I did want to ask you is wh- where you guys are right now. Five games left in the season. Is it is it is it fun or interesting that you you kind of have no idea what's going to happen with this team? Yeah, I wouldn't say it's fun. Uh, <laughs> it's interesting. Um, it's you know it's been a long year. Um, in terms of, you know, I think kind of where we started the year with our expectations and we've had a lot of great moments. I mean, this building has been amazing. Uh, we've had some tough moments on the road for sure. That's been well documented. Um, I think where we stand right now is in, we're in pretty good shape, especially health wise. And, um, I think we're playing some good basketball. And then I think the biggest thing we probably can hang our hat on is when we're at our best, you know, who, who can beat us? You know, and unfortunately, we haven't always been at our best, so that's a little bit of the issue. But the the big thing is, if we can get to the playoffs and be at our best enough, we've got a you know we've got a chance to to beat teams in advance. Mike, my definition, and you didn't ask me, but my definition of team, a good team, is you have a variety. Every person brings something different, right? And we got Steph, the Clay, and Poole, and Dre. But can you speak to how important Kevon Looney is? Because I feel like we just take it for granted. And, you know, if there's a change up to the lineup, there's no, you know, moaning at all. He just, but then the uh, the rebounding, the offensive yeah. boards, it's just like, just we, I think we take it for granted. He's just a rock. He's been unbelievable for us. And, uh, you know, we all, we all know that. The guy doesn't get anywhere near the, the credit he deserves. Mm. You look at his assist to turnover ratio. You know we're a team that throws the ball over the gym. He 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 takes care of it. We put the ball in his hands quite a bit. I mean, it's not like he's a guy who doesn't touch the ball. So you mentioned it with the rebounding, the defense just does what whatever is asked of him. And uh, he, he's a great teammate. I played with Taj Gibson in Chicago, who I always thought was like the wow. ultimate ultimate yeah. teammate. And and I would say the same about Loon. Like you're you're just that's not a hell gonna, of a compliment, yeah, Taj. Yeah, yeah, you're not you're not going to find a better teammate. You're you're just not in terms of bringing it every day, being professional. Um, great in the locker room. In an and, era of load management, never yeah, taking a night off. Yeah, knock on wood. He, he's been, yeah. la- after, especially the way he started his career with injuries and things like that, Incredible. he's gotten everything in order and, um, you know, really happy. He, he deserves everything he gets. And I feel bad. What? I feel bad saying, I didn't say you couldn't coach. <laughs> I just said, I just yeah, said, I see, yeah. I see you more as a front office guy. That's it. Sure. Uh, I get, no, no, I was curious as to the reasons why you were thinking. That versus the well, coaching. Love it. I, you you would have to be like a uh, I'm trying to think uh, a coach that really. Le- I'm trying to think who's level headed and doesn't get too high or too low. Kerr. 
No, like he would not break any. I don't. Oh, okay. I don't, cannot see you breaking a clipboard. <laughs> no clipboard. Well, I, I don't know. Put me out there with some tough calls. Okay. And, 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 right. You know, we'll see. All right, I'll come up with a list of, of why. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, hey, man, appreciate you Thank coming you, by, Thanks. and uh, good luck the rest of the season, and uh, hope to talk to you soon, man. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thank All you. right.